Setups are basically cheats in F1 Manager 22. They boost your driver's stats quite significantly, massively. They really help you win races. So if you can nail the setups in F1 Manager, you're going to do so much better in the races. And I've got good news for you. It's not rocket science. I am going to show you in this video how to get 100% optimized setups that are going to massively boost your driver's stats for quality and the race. So without any further ado, let's get into it and let me show you how to start. It starts with free practice one. So therefore, what we've got to do... Let the weekend begin! Okay, so here we are at the beginning of the weekend and you can see our performance bonus is 0 out of 15. Now, this isn't the bonus that you're going to pay your drivers in cash. You want to maximize this bonus because there's 15 driver points available here. So if you look on the right hand side, that bonus distribution, if we can get that up to 15 or anywhere near 15, it's going to allocate those points to the driver's ability. Your drivers will drive better with a better setup. That's the critical part of it. So how do you get 100% setups? Let's have a look. Let's go to Matt Verstappen's car. So you can see here there's these blue bars in the middle of the screen. And we are now basically, ladies and gentlemen, we are now basically in a mini game. And I think it's really important if you want to be successful in F1 Manager to realise that this is a mini game. If you try and approach this and think, I'm going to set up the car for Bahrain, you know, circuit with lots of long straights, uh, need to really minimise the wing and stuff like that. It's not going to work. This this is a mini game, and I think when you understand it in that concept, it becomes a lot easier. So we have these blue bars, and the optimal setup is within these blue bars. So for your first practice session, as long as you are setting your markers within the blue bars, as I've done for Max, it's absolutely fine because we need Max to go out there and we need him to give us feedback on the setups and let us know how close we are. So it's very important that you do enough laps for Max Verstappen to give you that feedback. And I recommend going out and doing 20 lap stints. And as soon as Max gives us the feedback, we're going to pull him in. So same with Perez again. So all you've got to do for FP1, I'm going to explain, by the way, a lot of the intricacies of how to manoeuvre these um, markers within the blue bars because there's some really important kind of fundamentals on the sand here, particularly with the rear wing and the front wing. Um, but for the first FP1 session, we're just going to get these markers within the blue bars and we're going to get Sergio to give us a bit of advice and let us know if it's good, if it's bad, or if you've already stumbled across optimal. So again, I'm going to amend the run plan for Sergio to do 20 laps. That's going to give him enough time to give us the feedback and then we're going to pull him in. Right, so going forward to the track, really, really easy. All you've got to do is send out your drivers and fast forward. And I'm going to show you how they give you the feedback. It's not really obvious in the game. Opening up the track map now. So here we go. Have a look here. Can you see the setup confidence? There are some uh, chevrons and uh, question marks here. For the drivers to give you full feedback on a setup, they need to complete all of those chevrons. See at the top there as well, there's a speech bubble with one out of five. So there's five things to complete. So you can see both drivers have already given us one of those five. And as soon as they hit five out of those five, they're going to speak with the engineer and give some feedback on the setup in game. And when we pull them in, which we'll do immediately once we've got that 5 out of 5, then we can actually have a look at the exact percentages. Let's do that. We zoom forward and we can see Max is about to give us that 5 out of 5. Here we go. Everything okay with the car, Max? Well, that's good. Really good job. So Verstappen's already happy with the car, and I'm immediately going to call him in because we want to have a look at the numbers. So there's no point here really going around, at this stage going around. There are circumstances where you do want to go around, by the way. And I'll let you know later on. And by the way, if you're enjoying this video, please, please, please take a moment now to just stop, like the video, and subscribe if you want to see more F1 Manager. Please, 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 it makes my day, and I would love to grow this community. Right, here we go. Here is the feedback from Matt Sappen, and he's already 90% confidence with the setup. We did a good job in kind of guessing, really, where to put the markers. And this is the next bit to do. So, first of all, because this is the only feedback we've got so far, you can see the current markers are going to be the same as the previous and the best. As we move on, it's very important to see the current, previous and best, and we're going to adjust according to those. But all we want to do here really is move our markers a little bit different to where we had before. And we want to see whether that makes the setup better or worse. So again, it's not about now getting the 100% right now. We need a little bit more feedback. So we're in a good place. We've got 90% is a fantastic starting place. And we've now just moved the markers a little bit off where they were to see how Max is going to find that. So I'm going to send him out again on another 20 lap stint. As soon as he's done, I'm going to call him in. You can see it takes a bit of time to reconfigure, but that's happening. Perez has come in now and Perez has only got a 
Now, it doesn't really matter at this stage. I have to be honest. Don't be disheartened. It, it doesn't matter whether it's 90 or 64 or 30 or whatever. You just got to move the markers now a little bit away from the previous ones. Because we want to get some information about whether it's better or worse to move the markers in that way. So make sure you keep them within the blue bands because we know the optimal setup is going to be within the blue bands. There might be a way to hack this, by the way, I think in just going really extreme on the minimum maxing. Um, but that is really formulaic. So if you if you want to chat about that, let me know in the Discord. But here we go. You see, I'm moving these markers. And it's, at this point, I want to let you know, there are only two um, car setup uh, options that affect the straights setup. And that is front wing angle and rear wing angle. And rear wing angle is very, very, very uh, harsh in the way that it changes the setup. So if you want to change the setup, I strongly suggest starting with rear wing angle and then front wing, because once you've done those two, you're not going to be able to adjust your straight setup anymore. And then you can adjust the rest. And I'll show you how to do that later in the video. Right, send them out again. Let's zoom forwards. And now they've had enough time. Perez is on the radio. What's he going to say? Very, very, very bad. And this is actually fantastic information for us. That is going to be super, super, super helpful to see why the setup has gone bad. Here's Max. How's the balance? And Max is happy, but Max on 9 cent before. Well, that's very interesting, actually. So let's go look at Perez. And we can see now that the optimal bars have shrunk. And some of our markers are now outside the optimal band. So that's quite easy to work out. Now, because our straight setup is outside of the optimal, we need to start with the rear wing angle and the front wing angle. Because once you've um, adjusted those two, you cannot affect the straight setup at all. And you won't be able to get 100% setup if you're not bringing that straight within the optimal band. Now, what I'm about to tell you is really the key bit for setups. This is the secret source. And when you think about it as a mini game, as I said earlier, this is why it's easy to conceptualize. Where our feedback is bad, we want to move our marker kind of as far away from where we were previously and still be within the band. Does that make sense? Because we know the feedback was bad. We know we're way off. So we want to explore the other side of the optimal band. And you'll get a feel for how much the optimal bands shrink later on. By FP3, they're going to be re shrunk you know, quite a lot. Um, but we want to move to the other side of the band. So you can see here, where it's bad, I'm going to try and move to the other side. Where it's already great, we don't need to move that much. We can move the marker a bit closer. And this is why understanding that you know, rear wing angle is quite significant changes, and then you use front wing angle to really kind of adjust the oversteer and the straights, and then tire camber is quite a minute one and toe out is, you know, very limited in what it does. That is really important. But you basically want to maneuver these markers. So if your setup feedback was bad, move it away. And if your setup feedback was great or optimal, if it's optimal, you kind of want to keep it there. So there we go. So we're going to put Perez on um, a new set of tires now because he can't go out and do those. Um, so he might not be able to get the full feedback in this run but we're going to keep him out there because we also want to get acclimatized to the track and the new parts now max has come in and the setup has gone down actually so it's 81 percent previously 90 percent before but you can see we've got an optimal at the top when you've got that optimal you're on a really 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 good streak here because we know that that green band between the green band and the uh previous at the top there that is where optimal is going to be so we're absolutely set there. And the rest, you know, good. We're now making smaller changes, smaller changes with Max's car. But as you're going to see here, it doesn't really matter whether you're coming in an FP1 with really low setup confidence. It's just about getting that feedback. Because as I'm going to show you here, this is what happened next. So we're in FP2 now. We're in the next session halfway through. And Perez is about to give us his feedback. And let's see what Perez is going to say here for his 5 out of 5. Maybe the next game we can play at is Goat Simulator. At he's silent, but he's, he means it's perfect. The setup is perfect, it's optimal. Now, it's not 100% perfect, as we're going to see, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty close. Let's bring him in and have a look. Now, you can see here we've got 99% setup. So just about moving those bands, we were able to highlight the optimal or, or land on the optimal part of the setup. And you can see the only bit here that we need to improve to get 100% to get 100% is braking stability. Now, this is a bit where it's really critical to understand how the front wing, rear angle, tire camber, etc. affect things. So you don't really want to be making changes to rear wing angle here. That's going to be too harsh. 
So now you want to be adjusting the more minute settings. And we want to be keeping our markers exactly where they were for, in this instance, both previous and best, because previous and best, according to Traction and Straits, is optimal. So we've done that here, and we're just going to try and move the one that isn't optimal, and we're going to put him on um, a new set of tyres and send him out for another run. So you see here, reconfiguring, and Paris will go out again. Let's see what Max is going to say. Here's Max coming on the radio. And remember, Max was really, really happy early on. He had 90% earlier on. So we're now still in like an experimental gathering phase with Max at this stage. We want to find more optimal bands and then we can bring them all together. So at this stage, it doesn't matter about having 100% setup right now really for Max. We're still trying to find optimal bands. And you can see here that we've retained two, but we've actually lost one. So the setup um, has gone down from 93% was the highest. And again, similar to Checo, we can see at the top... It was the oversteer, I believe, that is only good. So the oversteer, again, that philosophy of treating like a minigame, we, for good, we want to move our marker quite far away from where it was previously and more towards the optim um, the previous best. That's what we want to get to. For the optimal ones, like braking stability and traction, we really want to keep them where they are. So now it's a case of manipulating the markers to get braking stability and traction where they were. We want to get oversteer the furthest away and for cooling and straights, we want to move them a little bit away. Let me know in the comments, by the way, if that doesn't make sense. If you have any questions about F1 Manager, let me know in the comments. I'm streaming this game all the time. You can join us in the streams. We have a Discord with 2,000 people that you can join. And if you want to grow the community, like I said, subscribe to the channel. Please, please, please. I'm just a guy doing this in my spare time, but I absolutely love this stuff. Right, let's move forward and see how the feedback was for these setups. Here we go in FP3. Max is about to give his feedback, and it is optimal for Max. He absolutely loves it. He's over. He's overcome with joy. So we did that tweaking and we've managed to get it basically optimal for all of them. Let me show you exactly what that looks like. And here we go. 97% for Max. 97%. Now I am going to show you 100% in this video. But you see that's 97% for Max. It was just the oversteer. I think we couldn't quite get into optimal. We got into great. You see how close the band gets at the end. So by the end, you kind of, you really know where you need to be. Like I said, it's not rocket tires. But here's 100%. Here's Perez in the same setup, and you can see here we got the 100% highest confidence setup, and that is going to give 13 of those performance bonus points. He's going to get 13 extra driver points, optimal all the way, and you can see how I did it. It's, it's treating it like a mini game. It's not thinking, as when I started this game, I was thinking, okay, I want to have more cornering here. I want to have more traction out of the corners. It's, you know, Barcelona, it's more about cornering than straight, blah, blah. blah. That's not the way to approach it. It is about getting those markers and using the current, previous and best. Once you think about in that language, you will get 100% and you will get that performance bonus. And I'm going to show you how that allocates the driver's points. Let's have a look. So here we go. Look on the right hand side, the performance bonus. This is absolutely insane. Look at the points we're getting. It's really hard to get these points in Korean. If you play FIFA, this is basically like applying the, the chemistry and the training cars in previous games. It just makes your drivers OP. I mean, Sergio Perez is now like GOAT tier, like legendary driver. Look at that. And we've got 14 out of 15 because I think the car parts knowledge isn't quite high enough. But you can see so much is to do with the setup. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you didn't understand anything or probably I explained anything poorly, please let me know. Please make sure you're subscribed. And I'm doing this as a series so you'll see other... Um, videos like this in the playlist but again let me know in the comments really hope you enjoyed it give me any feedback how i can make these videos helpful or better uh, and i'll see you see you next time good luck in your managing